this show is going to be a combination of about 15 to 20 years of footage over the coming season. Uh, I can't think of anybody better to start out with than my father, Charlie. Uh, we're going to follow him for this inaugural show out on his cable restraint line and show you some older footage from uh, back in the day when he started doing the cables. And he's, he's become very proficient at it. And if you have any need to uh, catch some coyotes or foxes and the occasional bobcats, Cat, there's nothing easier than setting a few cables, and my dad's going to show us how to do that. So let's get started out there on the line with my dad right now. You can see this first set that I put in, and I've been trapping here for four or five years now, and when there's snow, you can see the trails where they go in and out of here. This is one of the great spots in this area, and this is a field where they come in, and he, he dumps some garbage up here, and that keeps them coming in. And there, there's a good trail over here. And I try to keep them not real close together, but what I do once in a while, if I put a set in and I, I think I'm gonna get one, I'll make another set without anything in it. I won't set the cable. Now, if I catch one here, I can go right up here to where I have another set ready and put it in, and I'll be in a close proximity to this one. I have about six or seven in here, and that covers this area pretty good. But if you, you could really set a lot more than that if you wanted to. So we're gonna go up here and, and check a couple of the other sets now and see if we have anything in them. But a good time to do scouting. We always scouted for deer after deer season in the winter time. When you got snow, you can find their trails and they're gonna use them year after year. And this, this is a perfect spot right here. And you can see the trail where they, fox and the coyotes run through this thick stuff. And that they're like that the whole way around here. And you'll see where we have some of the sets out. Well, he, look how he's, he's ducking down and he doesn't think we see him yet. He's been in there a while. Nice gray, nice gray. <laughs> I guess. Well, you can see this is one of the things we have to really remember when we set these cable restraints. My uh, cable, the length of them is not quite four feet, and you can see the circle he makes, about an eight, eight foot diameter circle. And it, that, that tree was there, but I knew I had enough room there. And he can't get entangled in anything there. That's one reason you really have to be careful when you set these cables. If you set where there's trees or on culverts or something, or, or on a crossing on a, sometimes guy, you find a nice crossing on a stream where they go over a log, where you can't, literally you're not allowed to put them on that because they'll get caught in them and they'll fall down and die. These, when you use cable restraints, these animals are alive when you get there. They differ from the snares, where the snares you can fix them and set them so that they'll dispatch the animal but with the cable restraints, they'll be alive when you get there. The only thing you can use the uh, snares for in Pennsylvania, you can use them to trap beaver underwater. They did a lot of studies with these. There's a lot of antis that are really against trapping and the animal hurting the animal when you catch it. But they did a lot of studies in the, with these cable restraints. They started like in, I think the two states were Missouri and Wisconsin, and they had trappers try these out and they proved that they were pretty successful. Then they had a lot of trappers try them out in Pennsylvania. And for the most part, these animals are not injured in these cable restraints. You come up to them, you can, if you get a, something you don't want or that's not allowed to be caught, you can let them out with no harm. And you see how he has the set tore up. And these cables, once you catch an animal in them, you cannot use them again. And what I do sometimes when I'm out on this line, I make a couple extra places to set another cable if I catch something. These are good spots. There's a trail right here. You can see how he was in here and dug this up. Nice gray, and there's a couple red ones in here also. And the fellow, the, uh, the gentleman that owns this place asked me to trap. And he put a lot of brush piles and things in here and he's trying to get some rabbits and other small game around and 
this helps keep it down. We never get them all. You can get three, four a year or more. One year we caught six or seven in here and every year they're still in here. But we do help keep the, this help keeps the population down and pr provides him with a little cover for a small game that he likes to hunt. Now we're gonna, we'll take care of this one, dispatch him, and we'll go over here and I'll show you how to make a set from beginning to end. Control predators on your land with a North American Trapper Coyote Package. You'll get all of the trapping essentials needed to handle this elusive critter with an instructional DVD included to teach you the way. Get your coyote trapping box and more at NorthAmericanTrapper.com. Caught that one right around the corner, and as I said before, I usually make a couple extra ones. I don't put a cable in in case we get something that's close. We're going to put one in here, and I'll show you how I how I make them from beginning to end. We'll take our time. We're not going to rush with it, so you can see exactly what I do. When I come up to a place, I have some I, I have my guide sticks in here already, and when I do that, I walk past where I put the cable. Because if you only walk up one what place to where you put the cable, they might refuse to go through it. But I go both ways. Now they know that I went through there. They know that I was here. And I use this oh and I break it up on the sides. I never did much of this before. I build it up. This has been this is, this is really working good for me. just makes it big enough for them to come in here. Mine's about four feet long, not quite four feet. And you can see this only goes down that far. That's a deer stop. If you get a deer in that, and I've had them get in these already, they'll pull it down to that deer stop, then they'll get out of it. So we'll get this in. Here's my Berkshire steak. I use the 12 inch ones. They never pulled any of these out. We'll put this one in the ground. You can see now, that's really tight. And this was a Berkshire stake, and I do, I did use some wolf hangs, but I ran, I don't have any of them with me right now. So I, I put a Berkshire on this one. Here's a support wire. I put this in here. What I do to really give it support, I put another stick down beside it, and that really tightens it up. And you don't want them to move. And I'll check my, bring my cable up, check about to where I want to put it. Now you don't always come up with the right length the first time. You just have to a little bit trial and error on this part. And I like the plastic support collars better than the wires. I just don't like the wires. They, they don't, I don't think they work as good for me. Now there's a little bit of tweaking to do with this and this is this one be ready to go and they got to be six inches off the first solid part and no higher than 12. there she be that's all there is to it then i'll put some of these weeds around it and once in a while I'll even hang some along the top of it. That's pretty much all there is to it. And I use this right before I get done. I'll bring these weeds up a little more since we've been walking around in there, tramping around. When they come up here, there's, there's no lure or anything. I don't use any lure. This is just natural path for them to travel. 
Handling nest raiders is our specialty, and you can become the steward of your own land with our North American Trapper Scent Package, which includes our Coon Buster DP bait and magnet trailing scent. Our sweet scented trailer will draw them in where our Coon Buster will then take over, and its soaked crawfish essence will entice those nest raiders to work the trap consistently. Look no further than our North American Trapper Combo Scent Package for all your predation control needs. North American Trapper, proven products equals proven conservation. I see we got another nice red little bit of snow there you can see pretty good been four or five nights since we had anything come through here at least they didn't go through the cables <laughs> that's a nice one though what I start doing when you set for Fox they recommend like six inches off the grid six to eight inches high and wide and there's some coyotes around here and they recommend 10 to 12 so what I've been doing I try to go halfway in between there and once in a while the, the foxes can get in back to their hip but that doesn't happen very often the ideal catch is right around their neck but you can see this one here I got it back along the hip because that that circle is a little bigger hopefully maybe a coyote would have come through it too you can see here this isn't a very big place but it's been very productive throughout the years and he's trying to get some rabbits and small game in the area with his brush pals and we're trying to keep the foxes down and a couple of the years we caught six eight fox in here now we're started using cables and we can get them later in the year this is, this is a nice red he's been in here for a little bit and this is the only one we had in this area today but we did see a couple tracks out there in the, with a little bit of the snow that's left as you can see here, my cave, the cables that I use are only four feet long, but you can see the big circle they make, and they got to be put where they cannot get tangled up with anything. And once you use a cable, it's, it's done. You just can't use it. So we'll take care of the fox, and we have plenty of other sets here. We have one down around the corner, and that, I had like seven or eight in here, and that's one less, so we have, still have seven good sets in here. Leave these set for three or four more nights and see if we can get another fox or two to to help the gentleman out just trying to get some small game in the area so we'll take care of him clean this area up a little bit take the cable out of the ground and we can use some of the parts on it yet to make up some other cable but this is a great exercise you're doing the people a favor by getting them getting a few of them out of here to cut down on diseases it's just a lot of fun being out and you, you just enjoy it that much more and you got to have patience when you set these cables. It's not like setting jump traps or something when you use lure and stuff and bring them in. You don't use very little. I hardly ever use any lure around these sets. You just got to be patient. And I learned that from my father when I started hunting when I was 12 years old. He always did his scouting ahead of time. And he picked out a good spot and he said, stay put. And I learned that from him, and I've done that all these years. And a couple of my buddies know when I get in a spot, I stay put. And in a couple of years, I hunted where I probably shouldn't have been hunting because I got attached to the area, and I didn't want to leave it. But it's really a lot of fun. Have patience, and sooner or later, it will produce. Madness Predator Lure. This is our time-tested North American Trapper Canine Curiosity Blend that is a mixture of pure skunk quill, coyote glands, beaver juice, asafoetida, civet oil, and other essential ingredients making it a must-have for your canine and predator sets. This is a multi-layered lure that does have the skunk carry to it, but will not overpower the animal at the set. This lure works great for coyote, fox, bobcat, and more when you head to the field. Proven products equals proven conservation. See all of our great wildlife control solutions at NorthAmericanTrapper.com today. Enjoying my dad here on this first show. We're actually 
in his honor. He's in Pennsylvania right now, and I'm down here in Mississippi. We're going out and set a few cables, but this uh, park that's coming up right here is very near and dear to me. I've been filming for about 20 years, and having this reaction of my father, this was about three, four years ago, um, and you're going to see his reaction here in this clip, but it's, it's, no, it's not probably. It is the most awesome thing that I've ever filmed. I filmed some really good things and I've had the opportunity. I'm very humbled to have Johnny Thorpe and a lot of people have me go and do their stuff as well as my own. And I've had some crazy things happen, but this one right here and seeing how my father reacted to this animal, it ranks right up there. It's absolutely number one. And there's really the only other thing that probably compares to it as far as touching me uh, on an inner level dealing with trapping and the tradition of it is last year when I had my son get out there for the first time and catch his first raccoon in a DP. But I think you're going to enjoy this. I hope you're enjoying this so far. This is, you know, a great technique, uh, the cables. And my dad is pretty much a master at it. As you can see, he's very methodical. But this catch right here ranks top shelf of all time in my library. One right down this fence row. One, two, three, four, five, six, six, one here. And I have two more up towards the corner of that field. We got a cat! We got a big cat! Look at him! <laughs> Oh boy, Bobcat, oh, he's a dandy. Oh man, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Look at the feet on him. Boy, that is a dandy. Look how he has this all ripped up here. Man, oh man, you can see how I had to clear it out. Nothing could have got tangled on. This is sort of unexpected, very exciting. Now you notice he was caught in a, in a cable restraint. The difference between a cable restraint and the, the other ones is the cable restraint will keep him alive and the other ones that they can be fixed to dispatch the animal. Now normally, if you catch a, a bobcat, you'd have to leave him go, but the trapping season's from uh, December 15th to January 6th, and they count this as an incidental catch. So I'm able to harvest this bobcat, and I do have a bobcat tag. Really unexpected. The other one's nothing around the first five, but the sixth one paid off. That's, that's a big cat. He's a nice cat. I'm gonna put this tag on this bobcat because <laughs> this was really unexpected. And I, uh, my son thinks he might even be 30 pounds. I mean, he is a big one, big male. Happy day, 0 for five, and then one for six. That makes the day. That's just about anything outdoors. You can go, if you're deer hunting, you go every day, every day, every day. Last five minutes can make the whole season. And again, we're, we were able to harvest this cat because we do have a bobcat tag and you can harvest them with the uh, cables. With a snare, you can't use snares in PA. The only thing you can use snares for are beaver. But you can catch, if you catch one in a cable during trapping season, you can harvest it as an incidental catch. And that's, that boy is some incidental catch. See if we got anything. You can see we knew we didn't have one here, but look how that look how that's brushed in. Just perfect. Brushed right in, right through there. Good spot. You got one over there. Yeah, yeah we did get one. <laughs> There's another one. 
That's three today. Another nice red one. Boy, he has a circle. That boy was digging. We got him back a little ways, too. They can stretch out when you get them in the back like that. But you can see again, the catch circle, nothing for him to get tangled up in. Perfect set. That, tra that trail come right through here and went up in that way. And he was, he was running that deer trail when he got caught. Well, you can see we had like 10 or, 10 or 11 cables out and we caught three. That's a pretty good day. Again, as it stated, it's a lot of fun just getting in the outdoors, trying to outfox the fox, and they're really easy to set, a lot easier than using the steel traps. So if you're looking for something to do in the winter time, after Christmas is when the cable restraint, you can set them, December 26th to in the first week or so of February. You can have a lot of fun, give you something to do during the day. Well, that's the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely uh, am proud to have my father be the, the start of this North American Trapper Classic show. And, you know, the methods and techniques that he showed you with uh, the cables are going to work for you anywhere across the country. If you're allowed snaring, you can use snares or cables. It doesn't matter. It's the same techniques, pretty much the same premise and the same set techniques that are going to work for you out in the field. If you need any products, make sure you stop by NorthAmericanTrapper.com. We've got pretty much everything that you need to get you started in the field.